Good eye guys, my name is Miles and this is The Commodity and today I am reacting to a history of Australian food. This video was requested to me by Renee. Yes, I say me and I say I'm reacting because Fez is on his way to go get COVID tested. He's been coughing nonstop for the past two days, uh, complaining of chest pains and everything. So he's on his way to go get tested for COVID right now. I figured you guys probably would not enjoy listening to his coughs during all these videos. So if you saw our previous video, it was just me. And I think on the next three or so videos, it will just be me. Um, so if you guys don't like me and you only like Fez, I'll still try and keep it entertaining. Just if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button and bell notification icon that way you guys can check out our most up to date uh, posts and, and videos and everything. So again, this video was recommended to us by Renee. I looked through some of the comments on the video and it, it seems like a very interesting thing to check out. Uh, if you guys notice, I'm wearing my Dawn Adventures shirt. Uh, I was told that I, we completely pronounce it wrong uh, for Australia, but it's D-A-W-N Adventures. The guy makes outdoor content, uh, content about beaches and things like that he also makes fishing content if you guys like the outdoors he makes phenomenal content and he's a local australian youtuber we're trying to build his channel up and help him out uh, we actually reacted to one of his videos previously and he ended up sending us both uh, a couple of shirts each so it was really awesome so we want to give back and try and build his channel up so if it's something you might be interested in i am going to throw his tag on one of these sides up here uh, and he will also be down in the description below. So if you guys want to go check his channel out, click on that link after you watch this video. Guys, before I hop in, if you would go ahead and uh, click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. Also, if you would go ahead and give me a like on this video, it'll truly help me get this video out to more people. And if you'd like to help support, support the channel, su support words, support the channel even more, click the join button down below and you will get an exclusive YouTube short shout out as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out the history of Australian food. Norman presents Australian food story. So meat pies, I've been saying I'm gonna make one. Uh, I started a diet after I said that, so it might be a while before I, I make a meat pie. People have been hunting, gathering, farming, cooking, and eating food on the great southern continent for tens of thousands of years. But how have different cultures and their history in this country influenced the foods we eat in modern Australia? I think I can help you with that one. I don't need your help, thank you very much. Oh, really? So you can tell me exactly what types of food Aboriginal Australians have- These are the same, uh, those are the same drawings and depictions as the Aboriginal video that we reacted to. That's really cool that it kind of correlates to the video and it was a completely different channel. Uh, also, the diet that I'm on is a fasting diet. I'm, I'm fasting 23 hours a day and eating one hour a day, and that usually means just one meal. Um, so this is kind of hard to watch because I haven't eaten in 22 hours, so. I've been eating for about 50,000 years. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh. Join me, Miranda. And me, Norman, as we go on a food expedition to explore the bush foods eaten by Aboriginal tribes prior to British colonization. The dietary changes caused by the first wave of European settlement and how waves of migration after World War II have shaped what we eat today. All to discover exactly how history has created Australian, Australian cuisine. cuisine. For about 50,000 years, Aboriginal hunter-gatherer groups lived off the native flora and fauna. Their diet was high in protein and fibre. In fact, there are almost 5,000 different types of native foods they had to choose from. Wow. Meat came from animals they hunted. Kangaroos, magpies and possum, goannas, wedgetail eagles and crocodiles. Crocodiles? Jeez! All I've ever done with crocodiles are wrestle them. You wrestle crocodiles? So that's actually a really 
popular thing to do is is uh which i'm not sure if it's illegal now or not uh but used to i think i think there is a uh, season for alligator hunting in louisiana and i want to say uh florida as well in the u.s we have crocodiles in the u.s they're not they're not very common in the, I don't think they're common at all really in the Texas area uh, down below the ocean, but there are saltwater crocodiles in Florida and they can get massive, which I'm sure you guys know, you, you guys have crocodiles, so. I didn't say I was any good at it. The type of food eaten by Aboriginal groups depended on where their lands were. Coastal tribes and those close to waterways ate more seafood. Fish, eels... And, for example, did you know that Parramatta, a suburb and river of New South Wales, is an Aboriginal word that means eel waters? Eel waters. And mm. did you know that in northern coastal regions, the Torres Strait and other neighbouring islands, they eat turtles and dugongs? Dugongs, eh? Oh, please. Do go on. Oh, what that would That's taste not funny. Like. Yeah, you just don't get it. I get it. Oh. In the summer, local tribes traveled up. I get it. I get it. Oh. You go. That's a. Uh, I, w I mean, it looks like a sea mammal. I, w I, I would really be interested oh. in knowing what that would That's taste like. That's not funny. Yeah, you just don't get it. I get it. Oh. In the summer, local tribes traveled up into the alpine regions of what is now Victoria and New South Wales to eat bogong moths, which migrated there in huge numbers. Oh man, I am terrified that of moths. That doesn't sound delicious. Just think of them as cuddly beige butterflies. Oh man, I am terrified of butterflies. Smaller delicacies included witchetty grubs. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And honey. Oh. Ants. Oh. Are you scared of ants too? Let's move on, hey? Bush tomatoes, desert yams, and other root vegetables were also part of the diet. At mealtimes, groups came together around the campfire. They wrapped animals and yams in bark and used pit ovens for cooking or threw okay. them onto the hot coals for roasting. Small foods were also wrapped in bark, leaves, and organic materials for steaming. In fact, Underground ovens that date back almost 30,000 years wow. have been discovered at Lake Mungo. See so the unfortunate part of that diet, obviously the fish and, and the actual meaty animals would be enjoyable, but it may, they made it seem like a, a big staple of their diet was like ants and grub worms and things like that, which and moths. It is what it is. When we go to Malaysia, uh, that's going to be one of the challenges is uh, eating a grub worm type worm. I can't quite remember what it's called, but uh, I think it's going to be pretty tough. It's from grasses, shrubs and ferns were ground and eaten as a paste or cooked in hot coals to make cakes or loaves. The 36,000-year-old grinding stones that were discovered at Cuddy Springs in central northern That's New South cool. Wales may be the earliest evidence of the bread-making process in the world. I bet that was a really cool I love find. bread. I love bread too! And following the popularity of the macadamia nut, which is an Australian nut, hmm. more I bush tucker like pepperberries, bush tomato and lemon myrtle are being grown commercially. Just like me, I'm an Australian nut. Please stop. I can't, I'm a nut. So dumb. It's World War II. Then eating patterns changed fundamentally, right? That's right. And all kinds of things were introduced into Australian cuisine. But for that, we need to go back to 1788 when the British First Fleet landed in Botany Bay and established a penal colony. Food-wise, their plan was to start farming the staple foods of the British diet. But the harsh soil and weather conditions around the settlement made it hard to grow food. I would the first imagine British that settlers lived off goods imported from England, a basic diet of flour, salted meat, oatmeal and tea. They were reluctant to eat strange-looking marsupials, preferring animals they recognised. Fish, pigeon, goose and swan. Did you say they ate swan? Uh, yes, and also... As, as in, like, 
They ate swan. They showed the koala. And I was kind of worried that they said that they eat those. And I'm sure somebody has eaten one at one point. Uh, but but that would suck. They're so cute. They ate swan. Oh. In Tasmania, which was then known as Van Diemen's Land, desperately hungry settlers tried stuffed wombat and fried echidna with mixed results. Would you say there is an iconic Australian that food from good. this time? Yeah, it's also a symbol of life in the Aussie bush. It's damper. Of course, damper. Popular bread among swagmen and other travellers, it's made of flour, salt and water. It was probably invented by drovers who needed a food source that could easily be carried to remote areas and wouldn't spoil. When gold was discovered in Australia in the 1850s, people came from Europe, America and Asia in the hope of finding their fortune. Oh, I'm sure they did. Some Chinese migrants gave... I would have came to Australia to, to mine the first gold. ...gave up the quest for gold to establish restaurants or market gardens. Others became grocers, supplying restaurants with fresh greens, a huge shift and influence on Australian cuisine, as this was such a rarity before. And it wasn't long before cities and ports had their own Chinatown. The Chinese introduced wow. new flavours and cooking techniques, including ginger, soy sauce, and of course, the wok and the steamer. Asian foods. And European migrants... Aside from seafood, Asian food is, is my favourite. And Cajun food. ...brought with them the trend of street vendors selling ready-made foods like pies and pasties. These were our first fast food outlets. Hmm. They sold what is now recognised as an iconic Australian food, the pie floater. Iconic? Pie Never floater. heard of it. That's because you're not South Australian. The pie floater is a pie drowning in a bowl of pea soup. And if you think it sounds awful, that's because it is. <laughs> in 1864, Let me know the if you've English tried it. and Australian cookery book was published. The first attempt to establish an Australian cuisine. It had recipes that combined native and exotic ingredients. Want to make stuffing for hare or kangaroo? There's a recipe for that in here. By Federation in 1901, the staple foods were mutton, lamb chops, meat pies with tomato sauce and colonial curries. All of that sounds amazing. Curries were made using native animal meats and farmed produce and were brought over from India, which was then part of the colonial British Empire. The Australian colonies were now also influenced by different spices from China and from India, and coconut from Southeast Asia. After the First World War, food production packaging and transport became a lot faster. Improved supply of basic items like eggs, butter, flour and sugar, as well as new grocery items like desiccated coconut and cornflakes, led to the dawn of a golden age of Australian baking. A whole range of new cakes, biscuits and desserts were created, including lamingtons and Anzac biscuits. The perfect... Those lamingtons look really good. What is that like? Let me know what the filling is on those. It's accompaniment so to a cuppa tea, the national drink. And in 1923, a Melbourne scientist used the yeast mm. left over from beer production to create Vegemite, one of the nation's favourite really? spreads. Food habits from British colonial heritage remained, and the most important family meal of the week was the Sunday lunch roast. Yep, as that was becoming an iconic food of the nation, other world influences came into play. After 1945. Hey Norman, how did our food choices become so multicultural? Well, after World War II, a wave of European migrants and refugees came to Australia and they brought new ingredients, flavours and dishes. Greeks and Italians introduced coffee and exotic vegetables like capsicum, eggplant, zucchini, artichokes. So coffee was introduced to Australia that late. That's surprising because Australia, you guys seem very, very particular and... and really good at making coffee, from what I've been told. Olives and garlic. 
Australians also adopted their concept of outdoor entertaining, al fresco dining. Al fresco. Pasta dishes, a staple in many European countries, became increasingly popular in Australian homes. McDonald's. They've got some of the best fries. And in the 1960s, US fast food companies increased their presence in Australia with the offer of fast, cheap, but unhealthy food options that would drastically change our eating habits. Changing attitudes in the 1970s saw an end to the white Australia policy and the introduction of the universal migration policy, which brought people from Asia, Africa, the Pacific, as well as Britain and Europe. Refugees fleeing the Vietnam War brought their culinary tastes with them and have had a dramatic impact on our eating habits. From a bowl of pho... I think it's pronounced pho. I think pho. it's pronounced pho. I think it's pronounced pho. We say I think pho. it's pronounced pho. I think it's pronounced pho. I think it's pronounced pho. I believe it's pronounced pho. It's so dumb. And the stir-fry, a popular meal that's quick and uses fresh, healthy ingredients. By the end of the 20th century, Italian, Greek, Chinese, Vietnamese, Indian, Lebanese and Middle Eastern cuisines have well and truly become standard fare in Australian restaurants and homes. Wow! What a diverse and interesting history. It seems like so many influences have helped to shape our food choices. Can we actually identify such a thing as uniquely Australian cuisine? Hmm. Hmm. I would honestly say the only thing that I think of when I think of Australian food would be the meat pie at this point. I don't know. I mean, I, that seems like the most popular thing that everybody talks about, or at least to us. I have not heard of any like specific to Australia and obviously the meat pie is not specific to Australia. Like I said, I, I was thinking about making one. Um, but as far as I know, it's, it's big in Australia. Uh, I think shepherd's pie. When I think of Australia, I think of shepherd's pie. I don't even know if that's an Australian thing. I, you guys might not even know what shepherd's pie is and I just sound stupid. Um, it's kind of like a meat pie, I think but without the crust. So less of a pie, I guess, and more of a casserole. But I don't know. When I, let me know some, you know, unique to Australia foods, uh, aside from the meat pie. I would have been pretty excited around the time that Asian cuisine came to my country if it had just arrived during my time because, again, like I said, Seafood, Cajun food, and Asian food are my top three. Uh, and I like seafood, you know, cooked most ways. I, I love fish. I love shrimp. I, I love all types of seafood. But, again, guys, let me know down in the comments what you think is, is pretty unique to Australia uh, eating-wise. And if you would, go ahead and click the like button. Click the subscribe button and the bell notification icon and click that join button if you want to help support the channel even more. My name's Miles. This is The Commodity. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.